In this video, we're going to look at a few of the options that are available for the highlights in simulations. You're all familiar with those. They're the boxes that appear around objects that the user has to click on or fields that the user has to type text into, that kind of thing. There's actually a few interesting things you can do with it though. So we'll take a quick look at those options in this video. First of all, this can be defined at the actual interaction level. So for any interaction in my simulation, I can choose whether I want that highlight to be available in demo mode or not, and in practice mode or not. So I can set it at that level. Realistically, you're unlikely to do it at the individual action level, and you'll probably set it in your defaults. And where you do that is under Tools, Settings, and under Authoring Settings, Macro Initialization, each type of interaction, for example, mouse action here. Under Simulation, you can choose Highlight and Demo, Highlight in Practice. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to look at how that highlight is played back. So I'm going to go to my Playback Settings, and under General, this is where I'm going to look. You can actually change it at the project level for an individual project if you want to under Project Overrides. But for here, I'm going to do everything in general, which means that all of my simulations are going to be played back using these options. So you see we have a Highlights category here. I'll expand that. And you can see here's the options that I have. First off, border. This is the width of the highlight border in pixels. It's set to 4 by default, and I'd be very careful about changing this because that magic number of 4 is used in the um, position of the bubble, and we'll look at that in a bit more detail in a second. You've got the color here. I usually set mine to red. By default, I think it's light blue. You can set it to whatever color you like. Just make sure it's something that is compatible with but contrasts with your application screen. Help color. This is the color if in the user says, I need help completing this step, then it will show the action area in this color. And a similar thing for form structures. If they ask for the correct thing to do in practice mode, it will show it in yellow. We'll ignore most of those for now, it's fairly obvious. What I want to look at is the type and effect ones. So type, by default, this is rectangle, which means it's gonna draw a rectangle around the object. But there's a couple of other options. There's also ellipse, so let's have a look at that and see what that does. As expected, that gives you a circle around the area. In this case, it's a circle because it's a square object behind it. If I went on to the next object, which is more rectangular, it will draw an actual ellipse around it. So it will give that. It can look okay. Sometimes it can look ugly if you've got something fairly big like we saw on this previous step here. So that's what ellipse does. Let's see what else we have. The next option under here is underlined. And there's no prizes for guessing what that one looks like. It just gives us an underline underneath the action area. So far, so good. I'll change that back to rectangle for the rest of the demo. Now I want to look at the effect. There's several different effects that are available. Show, it just shows that highlight. It's always there. But there are some other options, and I'll quickly go through those now and show you what they look like so you don't have to try yourself. Animate. This one here draws the highlight around the action area. Here's what that looks like. You can't control the speed of the drawing around it or the direction it goes in. It will just draw it. Next up, we have Pulsate, which kind of pulsates the highlight area in a constant loop of fading it in and out again. Let's see what that looks like. So here's the Pulsate. Be careful of using multiple highlights on a step, for example, for explanation bubbles, because these pulsates can be slightly out of time depending on when those highlights are displayed, which can look pretty ugly if you've got different pulses going on with a different frequency during playback. But it does draw your attention to the object. The next option we have is flash. This is more of an emphatic pulsate. It's a bit more attention grabbing, but it only happens a couple of times and then it goes to a solid display. Let's look at that. So it pulses three times and then goes solid. Next, we have zoom, which kind of scales in a few times and then goes to a solid display. Let's check that. So here it kind of zooms in a bit and then goes to a solid display. And finally, we have hotspot, which will expand out to a fairly thick highlight 
and then the highlight disappears. So we have an expanding highlight just once and then that disappears completely. So this is nice if you want to draw their attention to it initially but then kind of declutter the screen. The downside is if they blink they might miss it. So that's the options that you have. The last things I'll point out here is that there is also a help effect that gives you the same options that apply to the cases where in practice mode they ask for the help. And then you've got a bunch of options for guided presentations, which basically do the same thing. So we've got the border, color, type, and effect, all just for guided presentations. So they're the options available to you. One last thing, remember that the border is set to four by default. The reason for that is if you scale all the way up, you'll see that the pointer points to the outside edge of the highlight. This highlight is four pixels wide. So if you change the, the width of this and may, maybe make it six pixels, it's going to overlap the very tip of the bubble pointer unless you go and change the position of that as well and change the offset to be six. So they should be consistent. But generally, it's easier to just leave it at four pixels. That's a reasonable size to use. Okay, hope you found that useful. If you did, please subscribe to the channel.